be patient. All systems downloading. Welcome to Katie Lindahl.show. Welcome in to Katie.show, and oh boy, this is a special one. Mm. With me, as always, my partner in crime, Sam Roberts. And then, of course, this is like a holiday treat. I cornered him after a segment, and I was like, please come on the podcast. We love you. And he was like, yeah, no problem, Katie. She's very persuasive. Very yeah. persuasive. I attempt to be. Yes. I don't know how good I am at it. But I, I also get anxiety being around you because oh. I feel like I'm going to go on a segment and have like a minute 30 to get through like <laughs> nine products. <laughs> so now I don't know what to do with all this illustrious amount of time. Don't you love when we do that? We're like, you've prepared for two weeks for this. Here you are. You've got all this cool stuff. You've got a uh, minute 45. I don't go. think people have any idea. No, but you're good at that because you're a pro. And you've done it enough times. You know you just keep that ball moving. You, you know how you to do it. Yeah, keep going. Yes. How do you, does, that, does that make you feel bad? Because that was one of the first things I said to Katie, like, I noticed that she goes up, and you can look at the set, right? So you can see where they're going. Yeah. And you can always tell if they're only They're not going to make through. it. It's not happening. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, we do, we'll do that before a segment. You know this, too. And we'll be like, we got to take a couple things away. Because you're right. It's like this long buffet. Of, right. And you're only getting to the first couple dishes. But that's, you know, when you got an hour show, we got a lot of commercial time. It's just everything is so much tighter than I would ever want it to be. You have like a huge celebrity on, you got like four and a half minutes to right. talk to him, where you want, you know, like you guys, you want to talk to him for half an hour. It's interesting though, because I feel like the format, and this is something Sam's taught me in doing more radio, it's like with TV, you still do have to keep that moving. Whereas in a, a podcast here, right. we have that time to learn about the personality yeah. and the talk. And do you think that the format, for television needs to stay that MTV edit style, and they uh, can just quick, 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 quick? Well, I mean, I, we have time constraints. That's just a fact of the matter, and we've got to hit local breaks, and we've got, uh, you know, certain ads we have to we have to run, but I agree with you. I mean, I would, having an outlet like this, a podcast or a radio show, where you can just, like, put the cans on, and also I just think inhibitions go away on the radio. When you know there aren't cameras, like, right. people say things, as you know, in radio that they wouldn't say on TV. Right. It's just, you know, if you listen to Howard, uh -huh. Like, you don't get Howard on TV. I right. mean, that's Howard, but it's also the format. And there's perception, like a camera brings this perception of that's the audience. So right. You know the audience is right. there with you. And on radio, it's like if you're good, or on a podcast, within a couple of minutes, you yeah. can kind of get them to forget that anybody exactly. else is in the room. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's dive into all things you, because the first thing I want to hit you with is, uh, well, we share some common ground, and I, I have a, a lot of respect for your background and starting behind the scenes. Yeah. And you were at CNN, or mm -hmm. Sports Illustrated, yeah. Yeah. and working on sports. Yep. All the, behind the scenes as a producer. Obviously, you're probably working with a lot of cameramen. Yeah. And I feel like having the same uh, experience at ESPN, having that behind the scenes experience has, makes you have so much respect yes. for being on camera. And I feel like you start to appreciate those roles. You know how to do those roles. Mm -hmm. And it just makes you better as a host. There's no question about it. Yeah, I started, I graduated college. I went and worked in Atlanta for CNN Sports Illustrated, which was a short-lived uh, sports network. It was the latest, greatest that was going to take on ESPN. And we know how that usually works out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was a producer. I actually started as an editor. I'd go in and log games, watch games, oh cut gosh. together highlights. I mean, for a 22-year-old kid, that's a dream job, right? You're watching... The, the late A's Mariners game till 3 a.m. and then cutting highlights Were you doing and what we were together. doing at ESPN, like literally logging every oh, yeah. single play? Log the play, bring them back to the editor. Editor puts the highlights together. How and funny. that was my job. And then at that age, that's there's nothing better. Dream job. Nothing better. How did and you then, get that job? Did you have to take a sports test? Yeah. Yes. Did you do the sports <laughs> yeah, test? I did sports test too. You did? Yeah, it was hard. And I remember sitting in that at 22 years old, and I was like, I've been preparing for this my entire life. And now someone's going to pay me and hire me to do the things that I do in my sleep, which is to like recite the last 25 Final Four teams and to recite who won the most valuable player. So that for me I was I hate you for this because work. I was like overachieving with accolades, like, you know, right. women senator in college and like 4.0, and then they were like starting lineup of the Orioles. And I was like, I do, really? Really? <laughs> Did you have it I though? passed it though, I yeah. nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but I mean, that was, to your point, it was, invaluable in for, uh, experience. I did it for six and a half years. I learned how to edit. I learned how to produce. I was an AP. I was a field producer. I did everything that everyone on our show has to do. And so now I understand why they do it. I understand why they can't do things. I understand what's possible. And when I got a show at 5.30 AM, not to brag, on, uh, on MSNBC, <laughs> um, I had to basically, I had a staff of two, and I had to put the whole show together. So that I couldn't have done that show with 
I couldn't have hosted it without being a producer and doing the writing and putting the rundown together and all that stuff. After doing that, when you move on to other things, is there something, I don't know if the word's romantic, but is there something like that you miss about getting to do a show with just two people? Like, it's just you, the whole, when you're doing a TV show with two people, it's a yeah. pretty unique experience, and it's just like, that becomes your baby. 100%, 100%. I, when I did Way Too Early, which was the 5.30 a.m. show, I'd been kind of agitating to get a show of my own and some space, and Phil Griffin, the head of MSNBC, finally one day said, okay, you can do a show, it's gonna be at 5.30 in the morning, and I can't hire any staff for you. That was like, I was wow. like, I'll take the real estate though, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. getting a show, I'll do it. So, to me, I literally, with a couple people who were helping me from Morning Joe, from a different show, got to build it from the ground up. So anything that appeared on that show was an idea that I had or something that I approved. So if it wasn't good, I could only blame myself. And I absolutely loved that show. I did it for three and a half years. And I, when I got on the Today Show, I just couldn't do it anymore, just scheduling-wise, because I was still doing Morning Joe as well. And for all the greatness of the Today Show, it's just a huge beast, yeah. you know? And there are a couple hundred people working on it, and sometimes you have to, like, trace through the flow chart to see who you should ask about something. And so, yeah, to your, to your question, absolutely. I miss that little, I mean, that was yours, you know? Like and you a startup. It no. is. No, it yeah. is. It was totally yeah, a startup. It was totally a startup. And the Today Show has obviously huge benefits that I never had access to people and, and reach an audience and all those things. But, but yeah, I mean, I, there's something to be said for, for sort of birthing this child and raising it up yourself. And like I said, as a producer, I could go in, I wrote every word or at least approved every word. I looked at every graphic. Yeah. So like, I, I, my touch was on everything, and if I wasn't happy with the show, it was my fault, and I like that. And then what's it like to see somebody come in and take over for you? Like, you built the show, and now it's like, well, it is time for me to move on and graduate, but now there's somebody else that's doing the line. Yeah, mine. you know, the good thing was on Way Too Early, we've had people that I know come in and host the show, so it wasn't like some guy fell out of the sky and we're like, who the hell is this guy doing my show? Um, I think I was able to sort of disconnect from it. They've kind of kept the format same. I haven't been on the show in three and a half years or so. Mm -hmm. And um, they, um, they've kept the show the kind of the way it was. So I see, you know, glimpses of the, the thing I created. But as long as, you know, the people who've done it have been great and they're friends of mine. So it wasn't like a, there wasn't any tension. It wasn't right, weird. Right. They didn't have to like tiptoe around me when they, when they were in the office. So to Sam's point though, is you feel when you, when you're somebody that's worked your way up from the very bottom, does that loss of control, does that drive you nuts and yeah. you have to just have through experience and grow through? Yeah, and I think, you, but you don't lose those instincts. So even on the Today Show, I think more than maybe some people have in the past, I'm like in every segment and I want to help, you know, write, write the segment and figure out what we're going to do and put the questions in. The truth is, though, you can't, you can't do it on a show that size. There's so much going on in the show that if you agonized over every little word that was in every script, which I do, unfortunately, it's a curse, and you worried about how things were edited or what the graphics said or the order we did things in, you just, like, as a matter of time, you couldn't mm -hmm. do it all. So, yeah, there's a little that loss of control bugs you, but you try to keep as much as you can. And speaking of a matter of time and how much information you have to process on a daily basis, Sam and I were talking about it. Like, how do you keep up? And how does your brain process, A, that entire day's work, and then is it just, like, kind of cash it at the end of the day? Yeah. You're not only staying on top, like, I know in my world of technology, that's one thing. you got to cover all bases 360. Yeah, and Morning Joe is pure politics, right? So it's, like, deep in the weeds, knows its audience, politics, foreign policy. Today's show broadens out. So I literally, in the course of a day, actually this happened, like, two weeks ago, I, on Morning Joe I interviewed three presidential candidates, and literally 45 minutes later, I was being dunked in a dunk tank on the plaza for the Today Show. <laughs> and it's like, or, you know, interviewing a movie star or whatever it is. So it's like the, the range of, sometimes you just shake your head and you say, I can't believe I just did that within the space of two hours. But, um, but in terms of consuming information, I mean, probably the way you guys do. I mean, I use Twitter like a news feed. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, I follow left, right, everybody in between just to see what people are saying. You don't follow and, me, Willie. What? I don't think you follow me either. Yeah. That's not, that can't be right. My Sorry, I put you on a spot. Server's down or something. No, it must, uh, yeah. It's a tech term. Yeah, is that what they say? Yeah. yeah. That's our goal after leaving. Yeah. It's like, how much time do we give him? 
before he hits the follow button. <laughs> my, my hard drive is down. Is that a thing? Is that something? Is that a thing? Okay, yeah, yeah. That's happening, and I'm sorry it had That's a staff. I blame a staff. If I had a staff, I would, if I had a staff, I would blame well, my and staff. I think a lot of people don't realize that you don't have, like, a whole legion of people around you to help support. I mean, you do so much yourself still. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, you have an assistant. Yeah, you're still for basic there. for basic stuff. You don't yeah. have a social person. No, no, no. Any any social comes from me for better for better or for worse. I, mean, I, I never know if you want to admit that. No, right. Because later on, <laughs> you're going to want to say, yeah, I don't control. Yeah, I know. Anybody. I need the Trump argument, yeah. right? It was an intern. You can always blame blame the intern. Um, but I, you know, I just I when I'm at work, sort of you know, the TV's on obviously, but I'm just constantly following news and and you know absorbing it. People say, like, when do you prepare for the show? You're always preparing for the show. You know, you're, you're following what happens. It's not like you tune out and then tune in for an hour at night and then you're ready for the show. It's just this constant. And I think you're right. It does, it's probably not great in that you fl you just have to flush some of that stuff. Got to empty the trash bin, man. And it's almost like you, you process it, you use it for what you need, whether it's an interview or, or, or a segment you're doing. And then a lot of times, unfortunately, you know, it has to filter out or else you couldn't hold it all. Can you watch, like, news for the sake of watching news, or is it just the brain is now wired to be, like, process this in the right way? Like, okay, what am I going to say yeah. about this? This is, okay, we're going to say this about that. Yeah, and, you know, when I get home, like, I just, I don't put, I don't put news on. It's like when I worked in sports, it was my job, and by the time I got home and was watching Sports Center, I was starting to resent, <laughs> resent sports a little, <laughs> yeah. you know? I was like, I don't even want to watch this anymore. Um, I don't quite feel that way about news, but when I get home now, I put on the Knicks or the Yankees or whatever. You're Just something. Sports. Exactly. Yeah. I totally flip. It's like the pal the mental palate cleanser. Um, but yeah, I mean, I you, you have to watch a certain amount of it, and as I say, I watch it all day, and I'm in the middle of it all day. But by the time I get home at night, I feel like I know what's going on. I'll study a little before I go to bed, and again, when I wake up, I don't need to be sitting again at home in front of um, MSNBC or CNN or whatever it is. And you have to do the homework, because as much as you know, there's news content where you're doing MSNBC, and then today's show, there's even more viral content, and people are just waiting for news people to say one wrong word oh, or yeah. make one mistake. Like, they're waiting for you to mess yeah. up so they can just spread it everywhere. No, that's true. I, we had um, Amanda Seyfried on a few, a couple months ago, this I guess. one of my favorites. Oh, you know this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, tell I'm, Wait, I'm trying to think of what happened. Okay, so she was in um, Mean Girls. Right. So we were introducing Amanda Seyfried, who was on for another movie. She was in Mean Girls, and the script said that she played a ditzy teen. Okay? So she played a ditzy teen in Mean Girls. You know, you've been up all morning. These things happen. It comes in the prompter. And I could say this, I think, on your podcast. And I said, Amanda Seyfried played a titsy teen. <laughs> And her eyes got so wide, and I didn't remember this, but it turns out in the movie, she did something with her chest, or she did the weather with her chest, or she something like that. She could predict the weather. She could predict the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She could predict the weather. Um, so that was one of those moments where, like, it was, I was actually okay with it, but, like, everyone's, you know, laughing at you. That was so at viral. I mean, that was instantaneously. Did you panic? How did you handle I that? I didn't, because I knew it was just a slip of the tongue. Like, what, if you say something, like horribly off color that's actually maybe come came from a real place or if you say something on Morning Joe politically that uh, maybe you shouldn't have said, that probably gives you a little more anxiety than just a slip of the tongue. I'm like, do you really think I was calling you? Or maybe <laughs> yeah. I did. Maybe it was a Freudian thing. I don't know. Because that's the word you use. For yeah, exactly. Like, that's even that's how that I word, always, yeah. no, that's not even a thing. <laughs> but she, you know what helped was she was so cool about she was it. So she, cool. was, she was like, oh, no, 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 no. So. But I'm thinking she hasn't been back since. Now that I think about it, maybe that was it. Um, so yeah, like something like that, whatever. What are you going to do? You yeah. know, you didn't mean to say it. You just try to stay away from the bad viral moments where you say something truly horrific. And I want to go back to the Twitter side of things, too, because I feel it's so hard to stay on top of digital. Yeah. Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Snapchat. I mean, there's always a new platform. And I think you do a really great job at in now learning that nobody's tweeting for you either. Yeah. It's kind of hard. You have two kids. Yep. Where do you have time for this? I just, I can't, whether I'm writing something that's going to be on TV or whether, or even if it's Twitter, I just don't want other people speaking for me because whatever. See, that goes back to your it, it No, it does. You. It does. I, because regardless of whether or not people know that someone else did it, they still think you said it. So if, if I say something on TV, 
that I didn't like and someone else wrote it. No one at home knows someone else wrote it. They go, oh, that's the way he thinks or that's the way he writes or that's the way he speaks. So I always, as much as I can, try to control everything that comes from me. Now, at some point, it becomes ridiculous and you just can't do all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I try to sift through every script and that's why I just wouldn't have anybody tweet for me because then that, that one, one thing goes out and you say, that's not me. You know, I wouldn't, you know, I don't, I don't think they'd tweet without me approving it, but that's not the way I write or that's not the voice I use. That's not the point of view I would have. So I try again, you know, to keep everything pretty close. Speaking of the way you write, I think a lot of people don't realize you are a best-selling author. Mm-hmm. Pretty incredible. You have what co-authored two books now. Yeah, yeah. The last one I wrote with my dad, which did pretty well. It helps when you okay. bring in like a beloved humorist, like my dad. Just <laughs> rope him in to get yourself on the bestseller list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> For people that don't know, your father is a very important man. Well, he's kind of a big deal. He's kind of yeah. He's the Ron Burgundy of his time. He's um, <laughs> his, his name is Bill Geist, and he's a CBS News correspondent. And um, yeah, we wrote a book together about our father-son relationship. He's sort of a stoic Midwestern guy. And we never had like those big sex talks or all those things that you're supposed to have with your dad. So we went back retroactively and kind of had them 40 years too late in a super <laughs> awkward, like two grown men talking about sex, two grown men talking yeah. about um, drinking. And um, yeah, people loved it. I mean, my dad is, he's an amazing writer. He comes from writing to begin with. So he, um, we, we kind of got together and as he said, he loved it because he only had to do half the work. Usually you write, you gotta like write a whole book. He's yeah. like, this is a great deal. I'm writing half a book. Well, I found it interesting to see that you wrote it also because, and correct me if I'm wrong, so your kids and grandkids could realize how unusual your relationship yeah. was. Yeah, what I think. What made it so unusual? Well, I think unique. I don't know if it was unusual. And in fact, the more we talked about it, the more we realized how many other fathers and sons were like, oh yeah, we didn't talk about this stuff either. I think what we learned was like the sex talk that you see in the movies kind of only happens in the movies. It's not a real thing where guys, no, here are the birds and the bees. It's, I think a lot of people related to our relationship, but I thought it was just our funniest family stories. So I thought, you know, this thing will be on the shelf forever and my son and my grandkids can read about their grandfather, their great grandfather. And, um, and I just thought that would be a neat thing as you know, your parents age, you start thinking about legacy and all that stuff. And I wanted them to have that on the shelf. So it's Incredible. good. Incredible. Yeah. I want to go into the world of wrestling because a lot of people <clears throat> listening to this are be like, whoa, Willie Geis knows wrestling? He sure does. Not on your level, but you know, I dabble, I dabble. And that also I mean, makes you does, smart. really? Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> you, you call, you're not like Sabrina the Teenage Witch who, you know, just got outed for not knowing wrestling, but she oh. tweets about it because her sister's tweeting for her. It's a whole other oh, story. Oh, no, really? Yeah, no worries, no worries. Oh, no, no. But first, I have to just ask you, too, because I'm big on the philanthropy side. Your work and your research supporting Parkinson's oh, yeah. is really fantastic. Well, thank you. My dad has Parkinson's disease. He's had it for 23 years. Um, Seriously? Yeah, yeah. He just turned 70 this year, and he's lived with it and worked with it. I mean, working in television with, with Parkinson's years. is a pretty amazing thing, and he's... He finally, just about four or five years ago, kind of went public with it and told his audience that he has Parkinson's. And I think he was really, um, he was really touched by the outpouring of love he got from that. And he was worried that, you know, going public with it, people would judge him or, or um, say, well, maybe you shouldn't be working anymore. He didn't know how it would go over at the office. And he found just the opposite, which is that people loved him, you know, even more than they, they had. So. That's kind of one of those things when it's that near and dear to your heart, you, you, you sort of found your cause. And Michael J. Fox Foundation is just unbelievable, Amazing. and he's been such a great face for, um, for that. And so between that and veterans groups, you know, you try to focus. You guys are probably the same way. There are a million groups you could try mm -hmm. to help and, and work with. But between those two groups, that's probably where I try to do most of my, my philanthropy. That's great. Thank you. And uh, wait, what was I going to ask you about the? Uh, I, I, this is, might be a weird question, but the science techie and me. Did has your father found any? You know, just now we're at, at the point where we're like sequencing genomes and being able to find our DNA. Is that something you've went through in a worry that you might get it? You know what? I haven't done that, and I, there is. Um, they say there's a small genetic component to Parkinson's, so it's something that I should think about. I haven't done it yet. I know it's a decision a lot of people, not just with Parkinson's, but disease that have a greater genetic component, like. Do I want to know? My friend of mine's father. Has How do you feel about that? Um, torn? I'm torn. Yeah. I mean, I think the genetic component for Parkinson's is small enough where I'm not going to, it's not going to be something that's going to change my life. Um, 
I think I have a friend whose father has Huntington's disease, which it's a 50-50 proposition, uh, like half the kids mm. get it. So like, does he want to know? And should he know, uh, you know, for his own children? Like, should he have children? Is he giving them a 50-50 chance? These are like crazy philosophical questions. Um, and he didn't find out, and he's, he's having kids. So maybe there'll come a time where I want to know, but um, for now I'm just going to focus on it's very subjective. being healthy. It is, it is. And I, I, the doctors tell me, it's one of those things, maybe there's a little denial in it too. Doctors say, like, it's not a great chance that it's, it lives within you, but there is a chance. No matter how small, there's a chance. Well, I'll ask you a much, e much easier question, and I see Sam's eyes lighting up over there because he has been dying to get to all things wrestling. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, before we started talking, Willie comes in, and he, the first thing he says is that his dad has a pair of Jordans from 85, not mm -hmm. retro, not re-releases, yep. 85 Jordans, they're mint condition because he couldn't wear them because uh, he was a grown person. Still in the closet, a I, grown person, yeah. to which I said grown people wear those, but they're mint. Right, I don't consider <laughs> yeah. myself a grown yeah. person. Yeah, but neither do I. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're mint condition 85, so that blew my mind, and then he was like, oh, and you guys like wrestling too, you know, I was in Hulk Hogan appreciation night, and I'm like, Willie, yeah. we have a lot to discuss. Let's talk about that night. Hulk the, Hogan the appreciation banner. The banner. Oh, so they do, so Hulk Hogan, you were out of town for this one, unfortunately. Right. And you were actually very upset that I went without you. Right. But they do Hulk Hogan Appreciation Night at Madison Square yep. Garden. They had the garden lit red and yellow, you mm -hmm. remember that? Oh, yeah. And so they did this giant celebration, and they had Ric Flair out there, and the NWO came out, and everybody was out there celebrating the career of Hulk Hogan, and the culmination was that they raised a flag that was basically a retired yeah. jersey yes. to represent everything Hulk Hogan had done at Madison Square Garden for like 30 some 30 years. years. Yep, yeah. yep. Then you go online the next day and <laughs> you find out. Well, what do you find out? They took the banner down. It was a fake Come thing. On. It was a WWE fake thing. Banner. It wasn't a garden thing at all. So I'm like, oh my God, he's up there with You like, raise a fake jersey? It looked exactly like a banner yeah. that would be... But why even do it in the first place if you're not going to keep it up there? Part of the show yeah. that night. Part of like, the show. Like WWE did it. Madison Square Garden came out the next day and they were like, yeah, we have no, nothing to do no, with that. We're no. not keeping that up there. So it's up hilarious. next to all the Rangers and the Knicks and all the great championship banners, there goes the Hulk. And for, I was like, you know what? He's given a lot to this yeah. place, right? He sold out this arena. WWE's huge. Good. He's up there. And then I read, I read online literally the next day. So when, I think someone even had a picture of it coming down. <laughs> yeah, they did. I was like, <laughs> they just yanked it and like put it in a closet somewhere. Right. So the Hulk banner, if you look up, is not there. No. That's so amazing. they appreciated him, but just for that night. Right. It was Hulk Hogan appreciation. No. Night. <laughs> not forever. Let's be clear on that. Uh, 24 hours. But that was fun, man. That was cool. Ric Flair was there. Yeah. He came in, and we didn't know if they were going to throw down in the ring, but then it ended in like this big... Love you, brother. <laughs> Love you, brother. I got one thing to say to you, man. So good. And then you're like, what is it going to be? Yeah. That's a good impersonation. I love you. And then they go in and they just hold. They yeah. hold it. It was, I was super he was awkward. He was still, he had his Hulkster, Hulkster voice still. Yeah. He wasn't like, <laughs> I love you, dude. He was like, I love you, brother. I love you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you get this inside perspective, though, because Cena has co-hosted the Today Show. Yes. Yeah. He's a multiple good dude. times, totally a good dude, like, and you get to see this for, like legit, like behind the scenes. Cena is a super good dude, and what I was saying to you guys earlier is he is such a professional. Like he comes in, he's like, "All right, the thing I'm doing today is I'm co-hosting the Today Show." Yeah. He's got the suit on. He's totally prepared. He's read in on every segment. He's got like these really good probing questions that weren't part of the you know what our producers gave him. Like he digs in and he does a job like that, and he's good. And he's got a sense of humor. He had came with jokes and. Um, I was totally impressed by Cena, and we were talking about the possibility of him maybe fighting The Undertaker I think <gasps> at WrestleMania next year, and he would not spill any beans, but I'm a body language expert. You are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And so, uh, oh my God. yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing you have to ask mm. about Sports that. news and body language. Yeah, <laughs> body language. Respect. And I said, so are you going to fight? The, this was in a commercial. I said, are you going to fight The Undertaker? And he just came like, I don't know. But the, it was an arch in the eyebrow. That my training taught me. Right. He's fighting the Undertaker <laughs> at WrestleMania. This Done. is breaking news. Why? Well, I, I, that says it all to me. I yeah. told Katie that was my prediction that John Cena would wrestle the Undertaker at WrestleMania, and that's going to be it for the Undertaker. He's that done, closes right it there. out. I yep. believe so. And you disagree? <sighs> I usually I'm and I'm required to agree with Sam about 99.9% .9 of the time, so I have to <laughs> pick and choose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I was now knowing this. Because right. it's remarkable how much you can deduce from the slightest gesture. Yeah. I'm going to go with it. Oh, you're going with it? Yeah. Okay. Because right. I trust it's, you more than Sam. Yeah, I don't oh, like that Willie Geist had to come in and back up my wrestling <laughs> right. opinion. No, no, this guy, trust me. Yeah. 
but Good and you're basing it on everybody's eyebrows. How was Seth Rollins about. when he came in after Mania? He was cool. Yeah. Don't you guys find like these guys are all like pretty cool? Yeah. Dudes? And that's what like I was gonna say. It's funny that you say this about Cena because wrestling fans are all like wanting to find a chink in the armor. Like he can't right. be nice all the time. Right. He's got to be unprofessional here. But I've never spoken to. I've never had an interaction with him that was anything but pleasant. And no. I've never spoken to anybody. Like yeah. you, that that feels the same way, and yeah, like there are, there's no sort of story of like, yeah, but who's the biggest a hole? Right, like, <laughs> right, right. I've not met any. They've all been very good to me. Yeah, no, the ones I mean, I haven't met a lot of them, but the ones we've met who come through the studio, or you meet them sometimes backstage, and you get sure. a little bit of a sense of who they really are yep. at one of the events. Just like good, solid dudes. It's also funny to see them a little bit out of character, like when you're back at these at the arena, uh -huh. and like Rusev is like going through the buffet line, like getting we a saw him sausage at Starbucks. And, a, yeah. and a coffee. He's yeah. like, we'll have a triple like, tall like, hey, man, latte. Like, it was weird. Yeah, right? It was real weird. You know what else was I found, having not been to a lot of, I grew up on wrestling. I was a Hulkamaniac, mm -hmm. okay? I grew up in wrestling. And so I used to watch it constantly, and it kind of lost it a little bit. And then when I went back to that Hulk night, like the themes, it's different guys, but the themes are almost exactly the same. So Rusev is Nikolai Volkov. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He comes in the ring and he starts waving the <laughs> Russian flag. It's not Soviet anymore, but it's the Russian flag. Right. The arena booze. Right. And then he's got the fake Brigitte Nielsen handler. It takes you all of 30 seconds to figure out exactly oh, what you're supposed to do Exactly. In the Here's yeah. how I'm supposed to feel. Got it. Right. And she gets, <laughs> she gets on the mic and she says something like, you know, just the worst trolling ever. She's like... She's like, we miss beautiful Ra uh, Moscow, not like dirty New York City. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, you look up and she's from like Tallahassee. Yeah, or something. Of, course. Yeah. of course. Yeah. Oh, but like the show is so, they're so good at it. They really they're are. so good. So did you fall out of it? Like as you got into sports, did you fall out of sports um, entertainment? Or were you able to yeah, combine I'm the two worlds growing up? I think when I, yeah, maybe when I got to maybe high school and I got like more intense and serious about sports, and I just, I don't know, maybe I didn't have time to watch it as much anymore. But I, my, I mean, when I was growing up in, like, middle school and probably early high school, I watched, a, like, a lot of wrestling. You did? Yeah. Yeah. The, I watched a little TBS wrestling, too. You know, you get, like, the, the off-brand. The NWA. The NWA, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was just, like, it was so fun. And, like, the creativity, like, in hindsight of all the characters, I mean, Erwin R. Scheister, like, the tax agent. Can I tell you something? That guy? You just brought up... Katie Lindholtz, favorite wrestler of all, all time. time. That's your favorite wrestler? Of all time. Yes. But, like, think what that is. That's just, like, a guy. Right. With you know, a briefcase cool. and suspenders. And then you get older and you realize And a wicked that, elbow like, drop. Vince McMahon is just coming up with people that he doesn't like. like. Right. He hates paying his taxes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he hates tax guy. Like, <laughs> Everyone hates taxes. Yeah. Everybody hates paying taxes. Oh, my God. But they're so smart about it. And they, I don't know if they figured it out, man. I was on a plane with a, a big branding guy, and he was talking, like, he said, like, the WWE business model going back to the 80s was so ahead of its time when they'd have, he's like, they created an intercontinental champion so that, like, Latino fans had yeah. a guy that they could have as a champion, and, like, they were thinking about these things before Smart. a lot of people were. Um, so it's fun to watch, but they're also sort of geniuses. It probably doesn't surprise you because you grew up with it, but, like, I would assume a lot of people around the Today Show because I know it, it's happened when, when I and when Katie talks to wrestlers in different media outlets, the people who don't follow yeah. don't really realize that this huge fan base just follows oh. these guys wherever they go. I have right. to imagine that like when you announce any of these guys are going to be on the show, like all of a sudden the plaza is just full of yeah. Oh, people yeah. in the John Cena t-shirts. Uh, no, absolutely. If you look at the window behind us on the day Cena hosts, it's just... It's 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 not Bieber level quite, but like yeah. legions of Cena fans. And do like the, P the people like who work with you look out there like this? I think they don't quite this? get it the way yeah. I get it. Yeah. I'm like guys, go go look at the numbers right. every Monday night, right. and you'll yeah. you might be you might change your impression of them. But those, I mean, it's um, the the way they've maintained it and grown it over thirty some years. It's 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 pretty amazing. Speaking of, of Bieber level numbers and following wrestling audiences and stuff like that like what do you think is more difficult for you following keeping up on the news or keeping up on because the today show is like news but it's also a topical kind right. of pop culture contemporary trending topic right and that like you have yeah. to kind of be up on what's going on in the you do. world you do yeah like what's more difficult for you to stay up on i think i'm less 
interested in some of the pop cultural, like, I think also I'm 40 now, so yeah. like, if I were super interested in Bieber, it might be strange. I mean, right. I mean don't you think that'd be weird if I was Justin, like... Justin, I gotta tell you, I'm just a fan. Yeah, I'm just, first and foremost, I'm just, your music speaks to me. Just talk, tell him about deep tracks from yeah. one of his bootleg you're, albums. You're bringing up album cuts and he's like, yeah. well, anyway, Whoa. Yeah. That's an old, creepy old man. Yeah, cool, dude. Yeah, so like, when we have those kind of people on, I definitely have to read more than you know, if we had on a political guest who was like, my job to know what they're doing, that mm -hmm. just comes naturally to me. But there are certain guests where the Googling is d much deeper than others. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, I also respect and understand that I'm a 40-year-old man, and there's a whole legion of people who like things different than oh. I like. And so you have to respect that. And our the Today Show is, in effect, it's kind of a variety show where you start with news at the beginning, and then you go a little more celebrity, then a little more celebrity. So it's incumbent upon you not to like sneer at these things, yeah. but but to figure it out and learn about them a little bit and to ask things of, of these people that maybe haven't been asked before and try to get something new out of them. Otherwise, why, what are you doing? Like if you're on the show sort of looking down your nose at it, then you shouldn't be hosting that show. Not That's my similarly impression. Not from Katie having to do a lot of research before she could take her sports test. Right. Hey. You said that. I, I passed you, that with flying colors, Well, dude. I still had to. Flying colors. Dude, some who, who worked at ESPN? So, I mean, layoff, Robert. Let me, I, I, no, no amount of googling could have me pass a sports test. That's a true <laughs> statement. Just a wrestling <laughs> test. Well, we have time burglarized you enough, and since this is our Tech the Halls mm -hmm. segment, mm -hmm. Sam and I have brought you presents. Presents? Yeah. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. And we brought some stuff for the for the kids too. What? But you, you get two presents nice. to open on air. Do I open them on air? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I like the. Uh, the peanuts wrapping paper was a nice touch. Yep. Katie insisted to yep. be on trend. It's so on trend. I'm not going to lie, my mom wrapped it. No. She does all the props. Did you wrap these? Mom L is on fire. Oh my gosh. I like that it's a family affair here too. Oh yeah. Mom handles props. Yep. <gasps> okay. Oh. It's your very own Death Star Bluetooth speaker. What? That's amazing. So for those that are listening via audio, it is an iHome Death Star Bluetooth speaker. That's right incredible. in line with all things popular of Star Wars. Now, now this is another one, a little bit like wrestling, where you liked it as a kid, and now watching my kids get into it, is Star that weird? Wars. No, it's like they intuitively know that they should love it and that it's yeah. cool. Like I haven't even talked to my son that much about <laughs> it, but we go into the toy store and he sprints and he wants all this kind of stuff. What's his favorite character? Like Vader or Chewbacca? Uh, he likes Boba Fett a lot. He's a big oh, Boba so Fett he's guy. A cool kid. Th that's a yeah. random one. Yeah, he thinks bounty hunters are cool, yeah, and he's say, right. Unfortunately, the speaker only plays the Imperial March. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> On repeat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Present number two. Very exciting. All right. We just put it together about a random stuff, Sam and I. It is a to abominable pillow. snowman oh. Yeti pillow warmer. Oh my! Wait, a what? A pillow warmer? Yeah. So it what has a little uh, battery inside there. You Get can out. recharge it via USB. And you know those nights where it gets a little cold. You can recharge it via USB. Not a problem. <laughs> just plug yeah. it into your computer. And we wow. kept it in there because we all have OCD, so we wanted you to know yeah, like yeah. it wasn't opened or anything right. weird. Right. Sure. Yeah, but it is so wait, an abominable tell me what snowman. Happens. This warming. is the pillow itself. Yep, and there's a little zipper compartment. Uh -huh. So you pop that open, and then you'll see the micro USB charger. It'll last for about 500 cycles and then recharge in three hours, but 500 cycles is a really That's long time. That's unbelievable. And yeah. you got a hot pillow every night. You got a hot pillow. That's incredible. Willie Geist. This is a huge win, guys. Thank you so, so this much. This is a huge win for us. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Willie Geist, of course, you can catch the full interview at Katie.show. <laughs> Thank you for your participation in Katie Lindahl Dot Show. Follow our host at Katie Lindahl on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, please do. Goodbye.